How do you get a slight edge in business and life? We're going to tell you today on this edition of the Top 5 Scope. Joel Kahn here, and I'm with my friend Darren Kidd. Darren is a uh, mega millionaire, very successful guy, appears again and again in, in magazines that track success, and uh, he is a network marketing professional. The guy knows a lot about success. Darren, good to see you. Thanks buddy. for having me, Joel. Absolutely. Appreciate it. So episode 42 of the Top 5 Scope is going to be the top five ways that you can get a slight edge in business and life. And before we go into those, Darren, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your background because when people see successful people, they think, oh, it was just handed to them or it came easy. And I don't think that's the case. No, and, and uh, for those that, that know me and those that don't, my story should inspire and motivate all of you because uh, when you hear it, you're going to go, oh my gosh, if Darren Kidd can do it, I can do it, and that's the truth. Because 17 years ago, I was bankrupt, uh, my car was repossessed, we were on Medicaid, applying for food stamps, I'm a college dropout, my wife's a college dropout, and our town now has four stoplights. At that time, I think it was like two or three. <laughs> And so needless to say, I was pretty depressed. I went to the doctor for depression. When you can't keep a job, can't feed your kids, can't support your wife, um, you know, it, I felt like a failure as a human being. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. You don't have to say that on the Periscope, but that's the way I felt. And I was very fortunate to have someone come into my life, Jeff Olson, who is the New York Times best-selling author of the book, The Slight Edge. I did a whole Periscope on it recently. And actually, Alex Kahn was Periscoping, uh, heading out here, which... Those I've shared, shared Alex Kahn's scopes before. I mean, the guy's got several hundred thousand followers and I think over 50 million hearts. And uh, he had the Slight Edge book in his hands. And he's like, hey, Darren, I'm going to read this book. And the great thing about it, that time it wasn't in a book. Uh, I heard him train on it. And for the first time in my life, I said, you know what? I can do what he's talking about in this book. I can get a little bit better today than I was yesterday. And here's something, Joel, that he said. Um, that has never left. I mean, it, it just stuck in my mind. He used a couple examples. One, he said, if the reason that he wrote the book, The Slight Edge, and at that time it wasn't even in a book. He just trained on, trained on it, and then later it became a book. But w what happened was he, he said that mo what sells is overnight success. I mean, all of us, we want to, you know, lose 50 pounds overnight. We want to get rich quick. That's why the, the Powerball lottery deal, like people, that's all they can talk about. And so when they buy this book or, or take this seminar, this class, and they don't have overnight success, they actually go back to a place that was worse than where they were before they ever read the book. Right. They'd have been better off never read the book. So when he wrote The Slight Edge, it was about the simple little things that we can do on a daily basis that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them that compound over a period of time. Or it's a simple errors in judgment. So he gave an example. He said, what if we walked into a McDonald's and there was somebody on the floor, and they were dead, and we go, what happened? And they go, well, they ate a Big Mac, French fries, milkshake, apple pie, they died of a heart attack. We would never eat that again, right? Right. But it wasn't what they ate that day. It was they slowly dug a grave with their teeth over a period of time. They kept going and having that quarter pounder with cheese and, yes. and supersized fries and Diet Coke, which, of course, is it's terrible. Yeah. Yes, yes. And Sorry, so, and, and just he, is. Yeah, yeah, and he showed a chart, and it looked just like this. It was two lines, and, and they were going... You know, simple little things that seem to make no difference at all in the act of doing them. So we're going to give you five of them. But when you continue to do those over and over and over and over again, and by the way, progress, not perfection. Because when he shared, I'm just going to share a few of them with you. You can go buy the book, The Slight Edge, New York Times bestseller, sold hundreds of thousands of copies all over the world, and had never been to a publisher. Then it went to a publisher, sold out of Amazon.com within 48 hours, mm. and so just a phenomenal book. You can read the whole book. It will change your life in every aspect of your life. And uh, so when I heard that, for once in my life, I go, you know what? I can get a little bit better today than I was yesterday. Right. Because before I was sitting in the back of the room, I remember that I was at a conference like to the, like coming up this weekend, mm -hmm. and I was going, well, they must come from big cities. I live in a small town. They must have a college education. I have a lack of education. They must be great public speakers. I'll pass out in front of five people. Right. But when I heard that, I was like, okay, I can do that. I can do these things we're going to talk about. And then I started to do those. And then it started to compound, which has led to the success that I've ha I have uh, and had. 
And uh, the reason I like sharing that is because I remember what it felt like. And so if this can inspire, motivate you, because someone looked at me not as how I was, but how I could be with my God-given potential, mm -hmm. and it changed my life. So let's, let's talk about the five things. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So we're about to share these top five with you. Before we do, I want to give you one more opportunity to tell some of your friends because they need to hear this. And now that Periscope is streaming live in the Twitter feed, when you share to Twitter, it actually shows up playing live for people who are following you. So if you'll swipe, is it, if you swipe to the I think it's the right if it's, you have an iPhone, and Caitlin always keeps me straight, Caitlin Nolan. Um, swipe the other way if you have a, a – tap on the number of uh, people on the Periscope, and when you do that, then it will let you share. Yes, there you that's go. That's right, just like you guys are doing it right there. Jamie and Melissa and uh, Royal and uh, Desat, uh, Jim. Nirian Can't read Beauty, them all. Nirian Jim Beauty. Crow Love, I think. Yep, yes. and by, by the way uh, – as a network marketing professional, Darren works with Nurium skincare products. And so uh, if you want to know about an opportunity to work with a company that is blowing up globally, I've actually tried the products and they do make my skin feel better. No hair care products. Yeah, no. no hair growth. <laughs> All right. No let's do this. Top five ways to get a slight edge. Number one. Reading and listening. So for those of you, I mean, here's the deal. I don't know if any of you have issues with ADD, ADHD. I've got them all. I've got ADD, ADHD, ADD. Squirrel. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And uh, I mean, true story. This is not a joke. My daughter will tell you this is true because she laughs about it. I bought a speed reading book several years ago and still have not finished the book. That's not good. <laughs> but he said, when, if you can read 10 minutes... Uh, I'm sorry, 10 pages of a good book a day. I taught my oldest daughter this when she was a little girl. And I said, Taylor, if you could just read 10 pages of a good book a day, that's about a book a month. Most people, when they, they graduate high school, they don't read a book a year. Right. So in 10 years, you've read 100 books. Most people hadn't read 10. So the difference in a first place racehorse and a second place racehorse may only be a nose, but the difference in first prize and second prize, 10 times the amount of prize money. So whether it's listening to 10 pages of a good, uh, reading 10 pages of a good book a day, or listening to 10 or 15 minutes of an audio a day, or maybe it's on Periscope, where you have someone, uh, like, like when I'm training on network marketing, you know, while I spend over 20 years, like I have in the industry, doing things wrong, when you can take and jump on Periscopes and shave years off your learning curve, like, right. like I'm going to do with you. I mean, Joel has a hundred, how many thousand people following you on Twitter? 180,000. 180,000 followers on Twitter. Why would I spend years trying to figure out what to do when I can learn from him and shave years off of my learning curve? So number one is reading 10 pages of a good book or day, listening to 10 or 15 minutes of an audio a day. And if you don't like to read, then listen to more of an audio. So to listen to the radio, chewing gum for the brain, just put in that personal development. Now, if I read 10, if Joel reads 10 pages of a good book today, if he listens to an audio 15, 20 minutes today, and I do not, are you gonna see any difference in us? Not really. He'll still be better dressed. Well, my hair will look a little <laughs> bit better. But, and, but if, you, if that compound over a period of time, then it's going to be a drastic difference. So at first, he's reading 10 pages, listening to 15 or 20 minutes of an audio every morning. He's getting ready, and he's, he's got the positive stuff just going through his mind. So what you read, what you listen to, who you associate with, all that makes a difference, it's going to look like this. But then all of a sudden, he's going to start to do this. I'm going to start to do this. So it's, that's number one, read and listen. By the way, you're getting your recommended daily allowance right now because you're listening as True. we're as we're teaching and sharing yes. with you. So that's number one. Number two focuses on the physical body. Yes, the, the, I learned a lot from Paul Meyer. So if you Google Paul J. Meyer, he was a billionaire, gave away four hundred million dollars to charity, uh, paid for over a thousand kids a year to go to college. If you can imagine that, uh, forty companies in sixty countries that did billions of dollars in sales. And one time he was selling a life insurance policy to someone. And at 19, he was fired from 15, 20 different jobs. They go, listen, Paul, you're in the worst, you made the worst career choice you could possibly make. Okay, you have a speech impediment. You're terrible. You know, pick another tr career choice. By 26, one of the highest paid insurance agents in the entire world. Mm -hmm. And so at 20 some years old, a pastor friend of his saw him sell a life insurance policy. But the guy was very influential. And his life was a wreck. So afterwards, even though the guy had a lot of influence, he was making a lot of money, 
his, the rest of his life was a disaster. So Paul Meyer drew the wheel of life and he separated it into spiritual, physical, social, financial, all the different areas of your life. And he called it the wheel of life. So if you have a flat spot in your wheel, the ride is not too good, right? right? So you could work, work very hard, make a lot of money, sacrifice your health. That's not good. Lose your family. That's not good. And Paul said a lot of people will spend the first part of their life sacrificing their health to gain wealth. Not then worth it. No. They, then they spend the second part of their life spending their wealth trying to get back their health. Mm -hmm. So this part is the physical side. If all you did, this is what after we went to Disney for Christmas, look at that. Joel's working on his muscles. We're here to pump you up. <laughs> and, and we were can I, can I be, I'm Franz. I'll be Hans. And I'm Franz. Yeah. There you go. The, the, we went to Disney World. Went to a sugar coma. Oh I mean, it's ridiculous. It I is. could not turn. It's like I was never going to have sugar again. Right. But so it's maybe it's a little less, less sugar each day and a little more water. And then maybe it's 20, 30 minutes of some type of exercise. Remember, progress, not perfection. Don't set yourself up. Set yourself up for little wins. Can you walk for 10 minutes tomorrow? Okay. And if you do that for a week, next week up at the 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're drinking soft drinks, which we know are terrible, you know, can you cut back each day gradually until you're not drinking any soft drinks? You know, if you're, if you're eating white bread, can you cut it back to wheat bread until you can get rid of all of the bread? So again, your health, very important to, to make sure you're taking care of your health. So I, less sugar, more water, a little bit of exercise each day. I pound water. It, water is pretty much, I quit drinking sodas probably 15 years ago. I think maybe once a year I'll have a Sprite, you know, right, right. once a year. All I drink is, is water and red wine. Because, you know, a glass of red wine, right? Yeah. It's, it's actually supposed to be good for you. Of course, there was a report recently. The government said, now it's not. But, you know, what do they know? Red yeah. wine for the I'm, win. I'm, I'm coffee. So yeah, I love the there, coffee. You, there you go. So number two focuses on your physical body. Move your body, intake more water, and eat less sugar. Number three is uh, another component, perhaps the most important component of you as a human being. And that is your spiritual component. Spiritual. And so, again, Joel and I are both Christians. You don't have to believe what we believe, and we respect what you believe, and that's, that's fine. But whatever you believe, you know, spend some time each day working on that part of your life as well. So for, for me, for Joel, maybe it's uh, reading a couple chapters a day out of the Bible. Maybe it's spending some time in prayer. And uh, so, again, make sure every day you're working on that side as well because I believe, and I know Joel believes, that, that this life is a vapor. You yeah. know, and, and eternity is forever. And so I want to make sure that every day I'm keeping, and for me, I try to keep, and again, not perfect, but, but it's faith, family, then finance. So right that's, that's why I always try to remember. That's why every single Sunday, okay, that's the day that I worship. I need to go to church because by the time I get to church, most of the time I'm ready to lay hands on people and it's not in the, it's not in a good way. <laughs> so I need to be around people that believe what I believe. I need to hear that, that positive uplifting music. I need to be around uh, that. I mean, sometimes I've had a great week and people that I hang around or at church have not, you know, they need someone to encourage them and then vice versa. So make sure that you're spending time uh, on the spiritual side as well. Really, really important. Number four, hey, we need each other. And social media is more than just posting pictures of bacon and cats, right? Right, yes. But so, not much more, but pretty much. <laughs> the, uh, so on the, the social or the cultural side, it's, um, and we were talking about this before, you know, it, it's easy to start text messaging, emailing, social media, tw media tweeting, Facebooking, but they really have no emotion. And I know that I have not done a great job of this, but I've tried to write down recently, maybe it's a friend that's struggling with cancer. Maybe it's someone that you saw on Facebook that's going through a hard time. Maybe it's someone you want to congratulate. Recognition, babies cry for it, men die for it. And people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's a Zig Ziglarism right there. Yes, it is. Yes, well. it is. It, there, there's more to, this is actually a phone. Did you know that? That this is a phone first. It's called an iPhone. And so many people don't stop to actually pick up the phone, dial a number, and talk to somebody. And it makes a big difference. It could be a voicemail. Just hearing your voice, because the email and everything else has no... Um, no, and just give a little word, a few words of encouragement to that person. I can't tell you how many times that just on an impulse I've thought of somebody and I've either uh, sent them a video via Facebook or called them on the phone and they said, 
thank you. I really needed to hear that. It's mm -hmm. amazing the impact we can have. And that is uh, that gives them a slight edge, right? It's kind of like That's a paying right. it forward thing. Yes. So number four, be truly social. And finally, number- They said high touch, not high tech. Yes. Boom, that is like that. Right. There's some that? wisdom. Chase, can Chase. I can't thanks, that. thanks yeah. Chase. That, that's dropping some knowledge. And finally, number five, by design, because a lot of people put business and finances first. No, no. Number five, talk about how we uh, uh, get a slight edge in our business and career. Okay, so slight edge in business and career. Where do hearts come from, by the way? Keep tapping your screen and you'll see the hearts come up. Um, so business, we, we were thinking, okay, what can we do each day? Think of one thing that you can do. It's, it's called a can-do list, not a can't-do. And I was taught this from the billionaire Paul Meyer. You know, when I, when I would say, man, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. He would say, Darren, I want you to make a can-do list. What are some things that can help move you toward your goal? Uh-oh. That's okay. We're, we're, we're going to keep going. going. Yeah. And um, so if you're not, if the connection is not that great, you can go back and watch the replay, and it should be, right. should be better on, on that one. But what is one thing you can do today to move you a little bit closer to your goal? Okay, than you were yesterday. And again, it's that slight edge. If you're doing a little something and a high payoff activity, don't confuse activity with productivity. Make sure that it's something that's moving you toward the goal you want to achieve in your business. Yeah, there's a huge difference between working hard and working smart, right? True. True. Yeah, I can go organize my desk. I can go through my emails. I can check all social media and feel like I've been really busy but really, I didn't do anything to move me toward my goals. So make sure that you're focusing on one high payoff activity or profit producing activity on a daily basis to move you toward your goals. Remember the uh, Bill Murray movie, What About Bob? Yes, baby and steps. Baby steps, baby steps to the door, baby right. steps to the car. It, it's all baby steps and success, it, you know, it's like building a house. You don't just put a brick down and boom, there's a house there. Brick by brick, day by day, you build it, and before you know it, you've built, like this guy, an empire. So there you go. Top five ways that you can get a slight edge with my special guest here, Darren Kidd. Again, to review, gather knowledge, and you do that via uh, reading books, listening to podcasts, watching Periscopes that teach you, right? That's right. Number two is about our physical body, and mm -hmm. Darren gave us some great insights on that of uh, drink more water, because Water's good for you. Well, I mean, That's how right. much of us is water anyway, right? Like, what crazy percentage? Well, there was an anti-aging doctor that told me that he recommended you drink half of your body weight a day in ounces. So if I weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces a day, and I sweat like I'm doing right now, so I actually need more than that, but at least half of your body weight a day. We're going to hose Darren down here soon so he cools off. And, uh, and move your body, right? Any kind of movement. Just move the body, even if it starts by walking down to the mailbox and down the block and back. And just increase a little bit every day. Number three, have a spiritual discipline. Connect with your higher power uh, because I, this, this life is short and uh, there is more to it than this. So I think without that foundation, uh, the life here can be a lot shakier and a lot more challenging. That's true. Absolutely. Number four is, um, I can't read my own writing. What oh, so, social, relate, <laughs> like we're doing right here. Right, right. Like, relate. Yes. Again, for those of you tuning in, this is the first time that Darren and I have actually seen each other face to face. And so this is like- what Joel said I look a lot better from a distance. And that's true. <laughs> I would never and say that. And in the dark. My wife will as, tell you I look better in the dark. As far as you know. <laughs> and number five, work on your business, your career incrementally. Rome wasn't built in a day. What other metaphors we got? Um... That's a good one. That is a good yeah. one. But it burnt. But it burned down in a day, right? <laughs> it's so much easier to tear things down yes. than to put them up. Uh, in fact, I did a Periscope a few weeks ago. I woke up uh, around seven in the morning and I heard what sounded like the garbage truck, you know, picking up trash. Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, I'm kind of in that twilight, and I'm thinking, wait, I still hear that sound. And finally, I got up, I looked out my window, and the house next to me, which had been for sale was being torn down, destroyed right in front of my eyes. And, you know, as a guy, I'm seeing wow. these bulldozers going, oh, 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 grab my <laughs> phone, turn it on and start periscoping. Watching this house come down and realizing that they're going to put another one there. And it's going to take months to build a to new put one. it up. They tore this house down in a matter of a couple hours. So wow. it's going to take time for you to get there and just 
stick with it. Again, this is Joel Com at Joel Com. I got Darren Kidd here. I encourage you to follow both of us and watch the Periscope Summit that's coming up here. If you're watching live now, then tomorrow morning at 9.30 Pacific Time, I'll be doing the keynote. And follow Darren Kidd on Snapchat because he's going to be snapping soon and you want. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to try it. Trust me, this is going to love it. And um, hey, what else can I tell you guys? But thanks for being here. Hashtag do good stuff because when you do good stuff, good stuff comes back around at you. So on behalf of Darren Kidd and myself, Joel Com. See you on the next scope. Down Periscope. All right, take care.